Hello, my name is Bobette Hatterberg, and I'm the Children's Ministry Director at Cornerstone Community Church in Mayfield Heights, Ohio. The same, the stay at home order has dramatically impacted certainly how I do ministry as it's impacted most all of us in dramatic ways. This month I was supposed to teach for our women's um, ministry meeting. And since that was canceled, I just really wanted to have a way to still encourage women with what was going on right now. So what I decided to do was to share a conversation with another mom from our church. Her name is Becca Rogers. She and her husband, Chris, teach a growth group that's called Biblical Principles for Family Living. And as a mom, I think she has a lot of great but simple wisdom to share with you as you're all experiencing the same types of things right now. So thanks for talking with me to Becca today. Who are you currently sheltering with in your house? Well, it's me, my husband, Chris, and our three children. I have uh, a boy who is almost 14, another boy who's 12, and a girl who's eight. And we also have a dog. So the five of us plus a two-year-old puppy. <laughs> so a busy house right now with all of you together. I think that probably this time of everyone being home is probably hardest in some ways on families with kids, especially when parents are still potentially working at home and they're navigating school with the kids and their own jobs and then just the kids being home together and all that. So can you just share how your family, how this has been a stress on your family and some of the things you're experiencing? Absolutely. Yeah. So in a short time of 24 hours, we were locked down <laughs> as we call it in our house. Um, the kids, my kids normally go to school every day. Uh, so normally in the mornings we get up and kids go to school. My husband, Chris, is a teacher, so he goes to school, um, and I have my own business, so I work. Um, and when, in a matter of a short time, we were all, you know, told we had to be at home. So it shifted a lot of us, a lot of how we were doing our daily stuff. Um, I think the first few days were kind of fun. It was like, oh, fun, we get to be at home. But definitely as the time has gone on, it has been a little bit more stressful to be, you know, hunkered down each day that goes by kind of a growing stress, I think, for a lot of families. Well, today this is meant to be just that, a conversation, not a teaching. Um, it's a conversation about how to really make the most of this time. We're not gonna give you a list of things that you need to add to what you're already doing. Instead, we wanna help you just navigate what you're already doing to make it most God-honoring and most productive while you have this time. Um, we're just going to give you some simple insights, even how to use some of the resources that our church has been providing, um, and just hopefully encourage you. And, you know, you may even want to share this with your husband or share some of the things that, that we share and spend a little time thinking ahead, because I think we all are at that place where we realize this is going to be a little longer term than we originally maybe even thought or hoped. And so we really have to do more than just get by. We need to make the most of this time. God has given us this time. Um, and so um, as Beck and I've talked, one of the things that we just really um, wanted to hone in on is that there are a number of trials that come into this time for us. Um, and so I was thinking about the book of James. Um, James was written to the 12 tribes of Israel when they were scattered from their homelands. It was no doubt a very troubling and difficult time for those Jewish believers. So for us, while our tribe is not scattered, it's, it's hunkered down at home, as you said, um, we too are going through a difficult, uncertain time like they were. And so even though that wisdom that James wrote was to those um, believers during his day, it's also meant for us in God's word. So Becca, could you just read for us James 1, verses 2 through 8? Sure. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding faults, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So right out the gate here, James is encouraging these believers who are experiencing hard things to consider it pure joy as they face these trials. That's a hard thing to, to wake up each day right now and just say, okay, I'm gonna have pure joy today. It's kind of a minute by minute um, 
thing. And yet I think what we see him say is he says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. He's teaching us that our trials help produce perseverance in us and that that's part of what matures us spiritually. In fact, every trial is an opportunity for spiritual growth for us as believers. This trial right now is an opportunity for not only our growth as parents, but for the spiritual growth of our children as we get to spend this time with them, as they get to watch how we walk through this, as we get to um, work through it together, talk about it, deal with the different issues that come up. And I think the most important thing is that we just need to remember that this time period could actually be a very defining point in our children's life, not because they will remember this, which they will, they will remember this in their life. Someday they will tell their kids about it and, and their grandkids about it. But a defining point that it could be a very defining point for them spiritually is they wrestle with the uncertainty of the world around them, especially elementary kids who are thinking like, you know, what does this mean? And as they think about the different ways it's impacting their family. Um, I think about Deuteronomy where it talks about um, the parents are tasked with that job of teaching their children in chapter six and it talks about teaching them as you walk along the road and as you lie down and as you get up and i think that today more than ever we have that opportunity um, whether you've homeschooled in the past and so now there's just even more time because there's less alternative things for your kids to do outside of the home or whether your kids go to christian school or public school and leave home and now they're home homeschooling essentially um, we all have more time right now um, it doesn't mean it's an easier time because we have more time. In fact, in many, many ways, it's a harder time. So today, we just want to touch on a few of the struggles that you're probably dealing with. And we want to frame these differently for you. We want to talk about these struggles, these trials that we're going through, but we want to frame them as opportunities. You have an opportunity to take this trial and to do just that, to have, make it an opportunity for spiritual growth within your family. So the first thing that I automatically think about are the fears and uncertainties that people are facing. Um, these times definitely tempt us to be fearful. I know um, I'm not a fearful person, but I can be an anxious person about certain things. Uh, this has not rocked me um, dramatically, but I'm just shocked how even as I go I'm going through my day, something will pop in my head and I'll think how this is gonna impact that. And then the anxious thoughts start coming. And if I dwell on that, like I can get myself worked up pretty easily. Um, and so I think we all, to some degree or another, are experiencing fears um, and anxiety with this. Um, and yet we know that the Bible is where we need to go with those fears and anxieties, that there were biblical characters who went through very difficult times as well, and that God has um, words for us to encourage us and comfort us and to point us to truth in this. And that's where we want to turn our children. We want to turn to God's word with them so that their questions and their uncertainties and their fears can be answered as well. Um, so the opportunity here is really to build a higher view of God. We have an opportunity to remind them over and over again that we serve a big God, that God is bigger than this virus. God is bigger than all the frustrations we're experiencing in our houses. God is bigger than people who are sick. God has more power and more control over anything than we can imagine. And so we want to build that bigger view for them. We want to remind them, like Matthew 6 says, that if he cares for the sparrows, isn't he that much more going to care for us? And we want to take them to the word. We want to memorize it with them. We want to remind them of those scriptures. I think how many times in scriptures it says, fear not, for I am with you. Over and over, we see that in one way or another, that written, that I'm with you, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. And so we need to remind our kids of that. We want to teach our kids, I think of it like putting on Bible glasses, of viewing life, viewing these problems through a different lens. Our sin nature, our emotions look at life and we wake up and we think, oh, this is going to be boring or this is going to be hard or I don't like this or this is different or I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know how long this is going to last. But by putting on Bible glasses, we can see it through God's eyes and we can say, God knows how long this is going to last. God sees what we're doing today and we can honor him just as well here as we can if things were different today. So we want to help them reframe the what ifs into even if. So instead of what if dad loses his job? What if this lasts another month? What if this lasts another two months? What if we don't get to go on our vacation in June? 
we want to shift that to even if dad would lose his job, God will provide for us. And we can give them some specific ways that we've seen God provide in the past when we've been unsure. Um, even if our vacation gets canceled, we can trust God that our time together can be very special just like vacation is. And that he is the thing that's most fulfilling to us, even more than our vacation. So Becca, I want to just ask you, since you have younger kids and you're, you're discipling this through them, do you have some suggestions of how you're building a bigger view of God for them during this time? Sure. So uh, one of the things we decided to do was to take advantage of the extra time that we would have at home. So normally in the mornings, uh, my kids get up and they do their own devotionals. We they read from scripture and they have a journal that they write in. And um, so we decided that we wanted to do some more family time devotion. So we are doing Pastor Paul's book, Anxiety, Knowing God's Peace, a 31 day devotional for life. It's been great, especially the one that we did last night. It was just so exactly what our family needed to hear. Um, school age kids, I think this is great for, um, it might be a little bit harder for them to understand everything, but the questions at the end have been super helpful for our family. They've been able to share a lot of things that have been on their hearts that maybe I wasn't even aware of that they were concerned about or worried about. And we can right there talk through how we can put God in that and how he can take away that fear and anxiety and how we have to, um, just turn to him during these times. Um, Chris and I have been able to share what we've been concerned about and so that they see that we have struggles too and that this isn't easy for us too. It's okay to admit that to your kids. I think that's great. If they see our struggle and they see that we're turning to the Lord in that struggle, that's a huge testimony to them. Absolutely. So that's one of the things we've done. Um, one other idea that I think is great for kids. It's just journaling in general. Um, I have a journal that I pass back and forth with my kids. Um, and this is something you don't have to start, but something that has been helpful for us. Um, they can write down anything. You could ask them a question in the journal, um, maybe something that they're worried about or what they're feeling during this time of the virus. Um, and then they can write it down and pass it back to you. Um, and then, you know, you can kind of get a little insight on what's going on in their heads. Sometimes it's easier for kids to, at least for my kids, to write stuff down uh, rather than facing me um, face to face with something. Maybe they're afraid by my reaction or something, but um, journaling is great. I think with little kids, you can do the same thing. If you have a kid that's concerned or expressing concern, have them draw a picture of what they're feeling inside and ask them about what's going on in the picture. I think it's a great way for little ones to express what's in their little hearts. Um, certainly, I don't think if, if your child, you know, little ones may not even have a clue as to what's going on outside. I don't think it's necessary to put anxiety or put fear into our little ones. But if they're, they are, they might hear you guys, you know, parents talking about the virus and maybe they have questions. And I think it's absolutely important to answer those questions um, but definitely build God into how, how those questions manifest themselves, you know, put verses, um, scripture memorization, or just taking them right to the Bible, reading them a story from the Bible or reading a verse, like you said, that said, fear not, um, you know, those are great, great things to do. Um, I think you talked about some books. Did you have some books and articles that you? Yes. I've been sending some links to parents each week in the newsletter. Um, the people who are involved in our children's ministry with links with articles that are great for parents. Um, some of those are about parents talking to kids. Um, I'm going to be doing some story times with some books that I think are really relevant right now that again just build a very high view of God and um, give us an opportunity to to do some fun things with the kids while we're separated. Um, I know that um, those are great ideas and I love just even how you're doing a lot of that together um, fear is probably not the only thing we're de dealing with right now. It's, it's definitely one thing, but I think the other thing that comes to my mind is just the discontentment, the even complaining that it's kind of can bring. I can only imagine um, if my kids were young and at home right now that they would be, um, mom, I'm bored. Like after they would get done with schoolwork and stuff, I'm bored, or this is too hard. You know, just the complaining that comes. Um, I think this is a breeding time for all those things. And so as moms, we have to figure out how we're going to handle that or as parents, we need to. Um, 
I know I've had to even stop my own heart from complaining at times lately. And so it's a thought process that we have to teach our kids. And of course, what we want to do is to point them to the Lord, um, who first of all commands us not to complain, but who gives us something else to do instead, and that's to be grateful. I find it very interesting. Paul Tripp wrote a um, blog, I think it was this past week, and one of the statements he made that really stood out to me was the most powerful weapon against fear during a crisis is gratitude. So there's even that underlying um, connection between fear and discontentment. And I know even in Paul Tauchus's book that you were mentioning on anxiety, there's a couple days where he talks about discontentment and it's a book about anxiety and how those things are connected. And so um, in Paul Tripp's statement about that gratitude is the way we fight back against that. So we have an opportunity here, moms, to take that discontentment and instead to see the opportunity to teach our kids gratitude and contentment in the Lord. Um, and so we want to teach them to be thankful to God for who he is. And so again, just looking at all the character qualities we know about God and to be thankful for those things, thankful that he's long suffering with us, thankful that he is watching over us, thankful that he won't leave us during this time. And then we want to teach our children to be grateful and thankful for the things around them, the, the things they have, the places, the people, um, some of those people they're separated from now, but we can still be so grateful. I think we take for granted so many of our relationships. And I know I've been thinking about many relationships in my life and how this is making me even more grateful for those friendships. Um, so um, Becca, without naming names, do you see some of that struggle with discontentment right now in your house? Oh my, absolutely. And like I said earlier, as the days have gone on, I feel like it's, you know, there's a lot of discontentment, a lot of grumbling, uh, a lot of irritation and that, that kind of thing going on. Uh, real quick, I want to read Philippians 2, 14 through 16, which I'm pretty sure all little preschoolers know verse 14. Uh, that's one that we taught at a very early age. Uh, it says, do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life so that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Um, so back in January, a member of our church, Lori Bucci, shared with us um, a, top, a discussion on suffering. Um, if anybody wanted to listen to that, it's on our webpage, cornerstonemayfield.org, and you go to the message archives. If you uh, type in or look under the teacher, if you drop down, it'll have Lori Bucci, and that'll come up, the Transformed by Suffering um, topic. But one of the things that she said in that that really has spoke to me since then, and obviously using it now for sure, is every trial that she looked at or suffering that she went through, she called it a faith assignment. So she shifted her focus into looking at, at it through an assignment from God. It was, it was a time for her to grow spiritually, maybe a time to minister to other people. Um, but just shifting that focus from, oh, this is a trial or stress, but saying instead, this is an assignment. This is something from God. So we can say that to our families. We can say, this is something God has, has for us. We don't know why, but we do need to trust that he, he gave us this assignment to to go through and we want to honor him in it. We want to come out on the other side, looking back and going, yeah, that was a great time that we grew. It was hard, but we grew. Um, so I just think shifting that focus, um, reframing how we look at things, like you said, if trial versus opportunity, you know, trial versus faith assignment. So just that shift in focus is helpful. Um, a long time ago, we started a thankfulness journal. Uh, in our old house, we, we did a better job of it. In this new house, <laughs> we have kind of tucked it away. I need to pull it back out. But um, I just left it on an end table, and anybody could. We wrote the date on it, and we wrote what we were thankful for. If it was just something, I remember thanking the Lord for an extra fridge one day because I had to put extra food in. Um, so anything that you're thinking of throughout the day, um, you just would walk by and write it. It wasn't anything instructed. And then every so often we'd read through them. We'd look back and say, wow, oh yeah, I remember that. Or I remember how God blessed us that way. Um, I think this is a great opportunity to create like a COVID thankfulness. You know, what can we be thankful in this time? Because like you said, we have no idea how long this will be. Um, little kids can do this. They can draw a picture. 
you can interpret. I remember I sitting and having them spell out words and the, on the journal, the words are enormous, you know, but <laughs> so really at any age you could do it. Um, if it, if it's easier, you could have a stack of papers and little ones could just draw pictures of what they're thankful for. You can make a little book out of it or take pictures with your phone and save it, you know, in an album or something. Um, I love that, that idea. Yeah. And if you feel like that's too much, then just have a time at lunch or at dinner and say, hey guys, what are you thankful for today? Just bringing that perspective back. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard during times like this to think about being thankful. It's not our first thought. So I think being purposeful is what you're, you're really saying is be purposeful in some way in helping your kids to be thankful and grateful during this time. I think too, like, you know, I'm sure we're all going to have, um, stories to tell when this is over that we'll pass on, you know, in our families about how hard it was and how different things were, but what a blessing it will be to have a recording of all the things that God did and that we're thankful for during this time as well. Um, what a great thing to be able to look back to. Um, just contentment, being bored, being ungrateful during this time. The next thing I think about being a struggle for families is probably the conflicts that are happening. More people in the house for longer time periods, I think probably it's inevitable that there's more conflicts going on. Um, I've noticed myself even just little things, um, the way I do things now, like my husband's helping load the dishwasher more often. Well, he doesn't load it the same way I do. I mean, that's a minor conflict. That's you know kind of one of those things you just let go and you don't worry about. But when you have multiple things every day, and then when you have kids who are you know, each have their own personalities and how they want to do things. Um, it's inevitable that there's going to be more conflict. I right away think of the book of James again in chapter four, where he says, what causes quarrels and fights among you? And he talks about how it comes from the passions in our heart that we war after things that we want and um, essentially cause murder. He uses that word and that that really is, is how how uh, serious our conflicts are because they separate us from each other. And so Becca, I'm assuming in a family of five that this is a challenge in your family right now. How are you using this time to turn it into an opportunity to teach your kids more and more how to make peace, how to solve conflict? Yeah, uh, we definitely have had more conflict than, <laughs> than usual. Um, we ask a lot of questions of our, of our kids. Um, a lot of what is your motivation and what you're doing? Um, how are you bringing peace to the situation? Or, I mean, we ask both parties, you know, both parties that are disgruntled usually are part of both <laughs> what's going on. Um, how are they honoring God? What are they doing to honor God in that situation? Um, what is it that they're trying to get out of the situation? You know, what is, what is it that they want? Is it that they, they want the toy that someone else has or they want um, the attention or whatever it might be. What is it that they want? And so I think asking a lot of questions, trying to get the heart of what's actually going on so that we can talk through that conflict. Uh, one of the things that we, we do and we've done a lot more lately is we, we try, we just stop and we pray. If, if it gets to the point where I can't, I don't know who's telling the truth and who's not telling the truth and who's mad at who, we just say, you know, what? we're just going to stop. We're going to pray pray and we're going to talk to the Lord. And you'd be surprised at how often it calms the situation down. Now, it doesn't mean that 30 seconds later, they're not fighting again, but at least we, we've brought the perspective. And then sometimes we have to stop again and pray. And sometimes we just have to separate. I think doing some extra quiet times throughout the day is also a great way to just bring peace to the whole day, um, even if it's 30 minutes at a time. Uh, my kids are older, but we still do a 30 minute to 45 minute reading time in their rooms by themselves. Um, just gives everybody that, that space. We love being together, but we also need that extra room from each mm -hmm. other. Um, one of the books that we use in Motherhood Connection is that um, Ginger Hubbard, Wise Words, books. It's that put off, put on, for, you know, Pastor Armin also has an adult version. Um, but it's that what sin are we doing? How can we put that off and what can we replace it with? Um, and that the wise words one is great for kids because it has, everything is right there. What questions you need to ask, what verses you need to look at. Um, and it just helps put perspective back in. So that's a great resource. That's a wonderful one. Wise words for moms, right? Is the name of that one. And yeah. who is the author again? Ginger Hubbard. Ginger Hubbard. 
if that's one you don't have, I highly recommend that one. It's, it's a very workbook type of thing. It's just a thin um, book, but it, you know, it's not a book you sit down and read cover to cover. It's more of a resource kind of book, but that's a wonderful, those are great, um, great suggestions of how to work through conflict and how to teach our kids to be peacemakers. Um, what an opportunity as we have just all the little conflicts that happen right now. Um, no doubt fueled by our discontentment and our fears and all those things, but an opportunity to learn to be peacemakers um, in the way that Christ made peace with us. Um, I also think about the challenges of just everybody's lifestyle being so different. Everybody's, like you said, in 24 hours, life dramatically changed for everyone. Um, our basic routines don't look the same. I kind of thought I would kind of keep my same routine and get up at the same time and do my usual morning routine and then sit down and do my work. And um, that hasn't necessarily been the case. Um, every day looks a little different. I mean, I still have the work I have to get done, um, but it's been, in a nice way, it's been flexible, but in another way, it's been hard to just stay focused and um, to see all the other things around us and try to figure out what is the best routine for today, especially when you have multiple people in the house with different routines like you do with school and jobs. So do you have any tips of just how, I think we all know it's time we get a structure going if we haven't already, because this is gonna be a little while. So we need to figure out a new structure. Do you have any suggestions just of how families can navigate figuring out structure or whether we need to have structure? Yeah, I think um, first, I think we just need to, like we talked a little bit earlier, just being intentional about our day. So being intentional about our structure, about how our day flows. It's going to look different for every family. For us, I've got three kids that are now doing online school. So totally different than what we were used to, what they're used to. Um, and you're right, we're kind of at the point where we're like, okay, we got to figure out some system because this isn't, this isn't going to work. But um, generally we get up uh, we do our quiet time, we have our breakfast, and the kids kind of go off and start their schoolwork. We try to get done around lunchtime, and then we have the afternoon. There's a little bit of more freedom in the afternoon, we try to get outside, dinner, you know, that kind of thing. So we're, you know, we kind of have a laid back schedule, but I think we're still learning how to do this. Um, one of the books that we're reading in our growth group um, is the For the Love of Discipline by Sarah Wallace. And she gives a great, we just finished the chapter last week, a great chapter on structure in your day. She homeschools um, and she just, she talks about having chunks of time where she, the kids know what they're going to do um, each day. It's the same time every day, but it's flexible. It's not, you know, down to the minute, but it's just kind of chunks in the morning, chunks in the afternoon to kind of help the day go by. And I think that that's, that's really crucial right now. Some of the things that we're hoping to do during this time is teaching our kids some life skills. Um, you know, my kids aren't home during the day, so I don't rely on them to get laundry done because it wouldn't get done, but now they're home. So I'm hoping to do a little lesson on laundry next week um, that they can help as part of the family, kind of that team mentality, uh, working together through that. Um, so I think it, this is a great opportunity to do that baking, uh, laundry, maybe some things, some tasks that you thought, oh, we just don't have time to really train them. This is a great time to take advantage of that, whether it be a, you know, a heart issue or a, you know, chore issue or something. I think it's a great time to take that opportunity to train. Um, some of the fun things that we are hoping to do also is my mom found a recipe for scripture cake. Um, you read a portion of scripture while you're putting in the ingredient, um, and then it comes together as a cake. And I, I just think that would be a fun thing to do. Nothing stressful. I think it's important too not to get overwhelmed with the hundreds of things that are going on on Facebook and Pinterest. I mean, great companies are doing great things with virtual tours and all that stuff. But in the beginning, I thought, oh, we're going to just, this is going to be wonderful. <laughs> and you can get bogged down with all the hundreds of things that can be you could be doing. So I think it's important to find what's going to work for your family. If you're one of those Pinterest moms that loves to do crafts and games and your family loves that and it's not stressful, then have at it. You know, there's a ton of stuff. If that feels really overwhelming, I think just doing some, maybe some simple things like a nature walk and just walking around talking about how the Lord created uh, the trees and the birds and watching, watching those different things um, happen while you're on those walks. Um, bringing the Lord into those days. 
Um, I think it's a great way, a great time to write cards to people where there's so many people that are alone and by themselves, they can't get out or older, you know, teach your kids to draw a picture or write, write a note um, or pray for them and send them a note saying, I'm praying for you. Um, or video chats. Those are, I mean, you know, that's so accessible right now. We're, we live in this world of technology that we're, we're able to utilize it for good. Um, I also really like Molly Flinkman, our dear friend that moved away. Um, she posted that well, since we're washing our hands so much, instead of, you know, singing happy birthday, every time you're washing your hands, teaching your kids scripture, you know, have a scripture verse on the mirror um, and change it out each week so that while they're washing their hands, they're learning that scripture um, over and over. So those are, you know, some small ways that we can kind of add some structure into our day or fun stuff to do. I think those are really great ideas. And I think that, like you said, each family that's gonna look a little different. It doesn't have to look the same or need to look the same. Um, and we kind of have to know what our kids need. Some kids need more structure. And so I think some of the struggles that kids are going through right now is they're used to having structure and they're not quite sure what to do with themselves and how to govern themselves. And um, so I think it's important as parents that we kind of know what our kids need in terms of structure too. And yet, like you said, taking advantage of the fact that we have a little less structure and we can do a few more fun things. We can go for a walk in the middle of the day that we wouldn't normally get to go to. Um, thinking about structure made me think a little bit of um, our church has what we call the dimensions of discipleship as we talk about what our church's goal is in discipling people um, and there's four components to that there's worship there's study study of god's word reach which is about reaching unbelievers with the good news and serving and so i think about that that's just a really great thing for us to keep in mind with our families right now as we're discipling our kids at home that we still want to have an element of worship at home. And so, you know, our church has our online service each week or it's being streamed so we can still have that. I'm sending materials for the kids to participate in that with their own bulletins and notes that they can take. And I'm also sending Sunday school material if parents would rather have their kids do that um, during that worship time. Sending links with um, the worship songs ahead of time so families can use those during the week and the kids can know those songs before Sunday service. Um, I've sent kids a song to learn for Mother's Day, Lord willing, we're together for Mother's Day, that they can sing a song that's called Jesus Strong and Kind, which what a song to be singing right now as we remind ourselves that Jesus is strong and kind even now. Um, and then the next um, part of that circle is the study. And so we want to use this time to give our kids more more opportunities to study God's word. And like you said, much of that just happens normally during the day as we just go about life and we can take them to God's word. Um, but I've also been sending an email that includes a format for a family devotion that can be used to follow up from the Sunday sermon. Um, Pastor Paul's been doing a five minute weekly um, kind of video devotion that I have I don't know if you've used it as a family yet, but I have found that it's a very simple devotion. What he has shared, his thoughts are very simple so that you could listen to that five minutes as a family after dinner, you know, whatever it's online, you can pull it up um, and have some conversation about that. Reaching is hard right now. We want to still share the gospel during this time, and yet we're very separated from people. But I think there are still many ways that we can reach out to unbelievers around us. And you gave the suggestion of cards or phone calls. I think those are great ideas. And those may be those connections during this time that gives us an opportunity to have some spiritual conversation or to say, what can I pray for for you? Um, as we you know, care about the people around us and reach out to them. And then serving is the last part of that dimensions of discipleship. And um, there's certainly the idea that we want to serve outside our homes and there's maybe less opportunities right now, but there's still many opportunities. The opportunities you mentioned to call or to send cards, um, perhaps to make cookies and drop them off at somebody's door. Um, maybe it's doing yard work. It's starting to get nicer. I could see easily, you know, walking around the neighborhood and looking for people that we could just um, casually help do yard work. Um, but serving within the family, you mentioned teaching your kids some life skills. I mean, what an opportunity for our kids to, to take a hold of the reality that like they are part of the team here and it's going to take all of us working together to get through this time and to still get you know, if mom's working and mom's helping with schoolwork, she's going to need extra help with all the chores around the house. And so that it, they can serve each other. 
and even playing well and, and entertaining themselves as a way they can serve mom and dad while mom and dad are trying to get work done. So I think it's a great opportunity just to think about um, all these difficult things we're going through and what we can teach our kids. Becca, thank you for sharing your own struggles because I think that um, some moms, it's easy to get discouraged and feel like, my family, they're so difficult, you know, but it's like, no, this is, this is part of life. It's just all heightened right now in our situation. Um, do you have any other thoughts you want to share before we close off today? Yeah, I just want us to really take advantage of this time that we have to be intentional with our families. Um, we, we have a unique situation where we really don't have anything on the calendar. You know, sometimes we, we have to plan stuff six, eight weeks in advance, and we, we don't have that luxury right now. And so I think it's really important to take each day as it comes, um, be thankful and intentional in that one day, um, but just take advantage of this time that we have at home together. Um, and just make the most of it. I hope it, you know, becomes a time that, like we said before, that we can reflect on and um, be thankful for the time we have with our families. You know, my kids are getting older. Um, my time with them is getting less and less as they approach their teen years. Um, and I just want to enjoy this time because it, we probably won't ever see it again, at least in our, you know, short span here. So just, you know, don't get overwhelmed by the length of it and just focus on the day that we have um, and, and in that day that we are intentional. Scripture reminds us that um, the Lord gives us the grace for, that we need for the day, that today has enough troubles of its own. Um, and so I think that's really good advice to just take it a day at a time, realizing it may be longer term, but by looking at it one day at a time, it's not as overwhelming and we can be more purposeful in each day. Thanks so much for sharing with us. I'd just like to close us in prayer um, before we leave each other. Dear Father, our hearts are so prone to fear and to complain and um, to feel scattered and even attack and cause conflict with those that we love. You've given us a unique opportunity to be together at home right now. We ask that you would help us to see you as a big God, a God that's always with us, that's always working your good. Help us, Lord, to be grateful for each day and to embrace the incredible things that you want us to learn. Help us to put aside our own heart desires and truly love and serve those that we live with. Help us add structure that helps us grow and yet relax and enjoy these extra hours that we have together. And then, Lord, as you work to take these trials in our own hearts and grow us to be more like you, help us to do the same for our kids. Help us to teach them of your love and your grace and your hope. It's in your trust that we pray. Amen. Becca, I just want to thank you again for uh, being with me. If anybody has any questions or you just want to talk to Becca and I, we're both really available to you. Um, you can email me at bhatterberg at cornerstonemayfield.org and I can forward those to Becca um, as well and, or give us a call through the church directory and um, know that we're praying for you as families during this time. Thanks so much. <music>